Scrumban is a hybrid Agile method. It combines certain features of Kanban and the Scrum framework. The rationale behind it is that whereas a Scrum team um, are fairly well suited for doing uh, product development work and a Kanban team are well suited for business as usual type work, organisations quite often can't afford to fund both types of team at the same time. You'll just have one team and they'll be expected to simultaneously uh, involve themselves in product development work whilst also being able to support um, business as usual changes, uh, support and maintenance tasks, um, perhaps tasks that aren't necessarily even related to the current product at all, but they might be for previous products that the team was working on and um, for which they uh, have inherited uh, operational support and maintenance responsibilities. So th that's actually a very common situation. It's more common than not, to tell you the truth. It's fairly rare that organisations will um, give their team members the luxury of being able to be completely focused on product development or completely focused just on support and maintenance work, business as usual. So in those situations where you've got teams that have to do double duty, that have to do product development and um, do support work too, you need a way of being able to manage all of that. If they were to do pure scrum, then they'd be establishing a sprint goal. They'd be expected and expecting to work without diversion so they can achieve that sprint goal. They wouldn't expect to have any competing interests to deal with. They wouldn't expect to be having to do work for perhaps a completely different product owner. So how then could they possibly service a new request that comes in, um, perhaps a major incident, a major outage or something for, for a different product, uh, without compromising their own commitments to achieving a sprint goal? Well, that's where Scrum Band comes in. Because with Scrumban, what you try to do is to get the best of both worlds. You'll start off with essentially what's a, a, scr a Scrum instance. And you will then, or the team, will then make subtle modifications which will allow occasional business as usual work to be supported. Specifically what they do is they will vary their quality of service. The variation of, 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 a, of a quality of service isn't something that is typically supported in Scrum. You've just got items that are on a sprint backlog and they have to be done before the end of the sprint so that the sprint goal is met. But the quality of service that is given to each one of those items will typically be the same. Why would you vary them? It's, they've all got to serve the purpose of meeting the sprint goal. But in a Scrum Band implementation, you might have a different prioritization lane. If, you, if, you've got a, if you've got a Scrum task board, for example, you might have a separate lane on that board, which would be for handling operational support work, business as usual work, defect tickets for either the current product as it's been released, or perhaps for different products that, that the team are expected to support. And what this does is it makes, at a minimum, what it achieves this, is transparency, it makes it visible. So if a sprint goal, this is the worst case scenario, if a sprint goal ends up not being met, not being achieved, at least you then have transparency over why that happened. A team can say, well, yes, but it's because we had to service these other requests that were coming in these other P1 or P2 incidents that we had to respond to because they were, they were priority events. And that is why our attention was diverted away from our sprint, uh, our sprint forecast and the sprint goal was not met. So it's a defensive mechanism for teams. It's a way of making the team um, accountable in a transparent way for the work that is being done whilst at the same time holding external stakeholders, such as senior managers, accountable for the, um, the situations that those teams are put in. So that's essentially what Scrum Ban is. It's a way of varying quality of service, so business as usual work or emergency work, P1 and P P2 type incidents, can be supported by a team 
that is normally going to be engaged in product development work. Now, that's the, the current understanding of what Scrum Ban is, and it's what's really meant by the Scrum Ban pattern. Historically, though, Scrum Ban meant something else. Scrum Ban was a way, initially, when it was initially formulated, it was proposed as a way of um, removing the scaffolding around a Scrum instance, a Scrum team, so they could operate in a leaner way without having sprint goals. Uh, the Scrum features such as the reviews, the retrospectives, the sprint backlogs and the sprint goals would be removed so that the team could work in a leaner way with smaller batch sizes. You would get rid of having this large batch, which is a sprint backlog, and you would just reduce it to having a continual flow, a leaner flow of work through a single backlog. And Scrum Ban was initially postulated as being a way of removing all of that Scrum scaffolding so a leaner flow of value could be achieved. And we need to bear that in mind when we talk about Scrum Ban, because that originally was what Scrum Ban was meant to be. But these days, Scrum Ban, the term Scrum Ban, and what we mean here by the Scrum Ban pattern, is, if you like, an ongoing utilisation of that hybrid. So rather than seeing Scrum Ban as a journey, in which you go from um, Scrum to Kanban, it's a permanent state of transition. It's a permanent situation of teams having to support both Scrum type behaviors with sprint goals and Kanban type behaviors of small batches and continuous flow.